Welcome to this week's edition of In the Hyperloop. I'm your host, Blake Annenberg, and this week's episode features Andrew Smith, Vice President of Entrepreneurship and Innovation with the St. Louis Regional Chamber of Commerce. The St. Louis Regional Chamber of Commerce is one part of the Missouri Hyperloop Coalition, which is a private-public partnership dedicated to advancing a Hyperloop route along Kansas City, Columbia, and St. Louis. On Monday, they announced an agreement to move forward on a feasibility study of a Hyperloop route along I-70 in Missouri. Black & Veatch, a global infrastructure company headquartered in Kansas City, will conduct the study in partnership with Virgin Hyperloop One and the University of Missouri system. Hi, Andrew, and welcome to In the Hyperloop. Uh, Thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. So I briefly mentioned in the introduction that you are Vice President of Entrepreneurship and Innovation with the St. Louis Regional Chamber of Commerce. Um, Can you tell me a little bit about the chamber and how your role fits into the work and its mission? Sure. So the the St. Louis Chamber, Regional Chamber, is the uh, economic development uh, organization for St. Louis, for the greater St. Louis area. We've got about 2.8 million people in that area. We cover about 14 counties. Um, spanning both Missouri and Illinois. And, you know, our mission is very simple. It's to uh, promote uh, economic development through, you know, the right policy initiatives, the right tax uh, plans at the state and federal level, um, through promoting diversity and inclusion uh, in our community, um, through supporting entrepreneurship and innovation, uh, and also educational attainment. So we have a really, um, I would say, sort of a broad approach and, and probably a little bit more progressive approach to economic development than, uh, you know, I guess what you'd say your grandfather's chamber of commerce. And that's reflective really of modern realities of being, you know, a city like St. Louis. Indeed. And you do have to have a broad-based, you know, company base in in the region and trying to attract different companies that need different things, whether it be transportation or uh, workforce. Oh, that's exactly right. So um, how did you become interested in Hyperloop or autonomous mobility? Yeah, I mean, um, well, you know, first of all, I'm I'm an entrepreneur by uh, by background and by orientation. I've spent most of my life, um, you know, actually being kind of out just starting companies, raising capital, um, you know, having uh, successes. And, you know, of course, like any entrepreneur, having a few failures along the way as well. Um, so I've always been interested in new technology, always been interested in the future okay. and um, have been kind of a, 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 I guess, a fan of Hyperloop since I first read about it several years ago. Um, the way that we became involved in a more formal way uh, was really coming out of work that I did over the summer um, as a project leader for the Governor's Innovation Task Force um, here in Missouri. Basically, we had a new governor coming in, um, looking at wanting to shake things up a little bit in the state, and wanted to review, you know, where do we stand in terms of being an innovation hub between the coast? Do we have the right conditions? What are our key strategic assets? What are our weaknesses? And probably most importantly, what are some things, right, that we can do to really promote ourselves in that way. And we looked at, you know, we looked at all kinds of things, reams and reams of data. Um, Some of them are fairly traditional and obvious, you know, deregulation, tax policy changes, that sort of thing. Um, Others are, um, you know, things that have been done in one form or another in other states, like, you know, creating a state venture fund, right? I mean, we've we've had our own take on this through the Missouri Technology Corporation, which is kind of a co-funding matching um, uh, mechanism uh, when companies raise private capital. But we're looking at possibly taking that to the next level, uh, more along the lines of what Ohio has done or Indiana has done. Um, And then finally, we were looking at things that we called moonshot projects. And these are big ideas that can really help to unify our state. And that was critically important because, you know, we we do have a lot of divides in our state, like a lot of states, I would imagine. We've got Kansas City and St. Louis, opposite sides of the state, both of them straddling uh, state lines, often squabbling like, you know, like siblings. Um, tend to do. We've got, you know, uh, racial and economic divides in our state. We've got an urban rural divide in our state. And so we really wanted to find things that would bring people together and harness all of the resources we have. The one that kept coming up more often than anything else was Hyperloop. And so we ended up looking into it, um, found that we were a semifinalist based on the Hyperloop One competition and decided that we were going to really lean in on that and see what we could do to make it happen. Wow, that's, that's really cool. So, Andrew, in your um, 
role as Vice President for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Uh, what are some of the biggest challenges you face? We have a lot of good things going on um, in St. Louis. Um, we've gotten a lot of press, I'd say, as being a, a startup hub, an innovation hub um, in the Midwest, and that's borne out in the numbers. And then, you know, amount of venture capital coming in, the amount of new companies, uh, percentage of companies that are getting funded. Um, so we had a lot of, uh, you know, I'd say a lot of positive momentum. On the negative side, the challenge side, um, you know, we don't have the proximity to capital, right? That a place like, um, you know, places on the coast would have, or really even Denver to, to a certain extent now. Um, and you know, I know from my own experience in finance and as, a, as an entrepreneur, um, the capital markets are not efficient the earlier you go, right? So things like proximity to capital really matters. So what we've done, for example, to help overcome that is as a chamber, we've decided we're going to put our own money at risk. So we went out and we recruited partners to create a venture capital fund. Uh, we've put um, substantial money um, at risk into the ecosystem through various accelerators. And we now have something called Spirit of St. Louis Fund One, uh, which is making investments of between one hundred and fifty and two hundred fifty thousand dollars in early stage companies. Um, the other challenge that we have, I think, as a region is, frankly, our image. You know, when people think of St. Louis today, um, they tend not to have the, the best associations. And that's a result of a lot of things. It's, it's our history um, and the fact that we're like a lot of Midwestern um, kind of traditional corporate towns. We've lost a lot of corporate headquarters over the years. We've seen our population in the urban core decline, even though our population is holding steady and even growing a little bit as a region. Um, and then we have, you know, things like Ferguson, um, you know, which was, um, you know, a major, major happening here. Um, and so we're kind of, you know, under the microscope, I'd say more than any other city or any other region in terms of dealing with issues like um, racial inequity, um, you know, police, community policing issues, um, and social trust in our institutions. Uh, so, you know, these are the challenges that we have as a region and we've got to find ways to overcome. You've highlighted some of the challenges. Um, what do you like working on uh, in the community and, you know, in, in, or in your role in particular? Well, you know, my, my favorite thing is just interacting with entrepreneurs, right? Because uh, they're my brothers and sisters and um, I know what it's like. I know what they're going through. And I think it's encouraging to them to find somebody in, um, you know, a, 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 a civic institution like a chamber of commerce who really speaks their language. Um, they're, they're not used to that. They're, they're often kind of surprised. Like, you know, wait a second. I thought the Chamber of Commerce was just for, you know, um, the, the local energy company or the big hospital systems. And, and it, it is. We do work with those companies. We, we you know, we, we depend on them. Um, but, you know, we also see entrepreneurship and innovation as the greatest source of new jobs. Eighty percent of new jobs are created by companies that are five years um, old or younger. So we need these guys to succeed. We need them to we need to be in their corner and we need them to be in our corner. Um, but the, the thing that's been most exciting by far has been working on this Hyperloop initiative. I mean, it's, I have to pinch myself. It's, you know, every entrepreneur wants to work on something that's big and world changing at some point, and, and this is it. So, you know, for, for us in Missouri, uh, we have this unusual situation where we are a state right in the middle of the country with two fairly substantial metropolitan areas in the state, that's unusual in and of itself, on opposite sides of the state, both of them sitting on state lines. So, um, you know, what ends up happening is we end up kind of competing against each other uh, in ways that, you know, while sometimes competition is, is productive and essential, sometimes it devolves into something that's a little bit less than that, right? And we, we see that a lot. If we had a hyperloop connecting these two cities, and you could go between Kansas City and St. Louis in 24 minutes, which you would be able to do on this route at highest speed, um, essentially we would be able to go to companies like Amazon during their recent HQ2 contest and say, you don't have to choose one or the other, right? Or, or, or you don't have to do both. You, 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 know, you can locate in Kansas City and people in St. Louis can commute there or vice versa. And what we would do what we would have done effectively is create a single economic development mega region of five million people. Well, you know that is a, a, a really substantial um, leap for a place like like ours. It, what it effectively does is it makes us bigger than Boston, makes us bigger than San Francisco, bigger than Seattle, um, and so we can start to leverage the assets of both places for economic development purposes. Um, you know, in terms of the urban rural thing, well, you know, again, Missouri is um, kind of the you know one of our uh, key strategic assets is we're the Silicon Valley of ag tech. 
you know, we've got a lot of uh, like really interesting work being done in plant and animal science here. And a lot of that's done along the I-70 corridor. It's in Kansas City. It's in our research university in Columbia, uh, University of Missouri, and it's in St. Louis. And to whatever extent we can link all of those um, smaller ecosystems together, I think it's going to really be to the advantage of everyone. You bring up a really good point, um, and not just benefiting, you know, a, a, a traditional industry, but also a whole uh, university um, industry that's incubated, uh, like ag tech. So, so you bring up an interesting point about uh, connecting a maker region together. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Sure. Um, you know. Again, one of the advantages that Missouri brings to the table, and I think one of the reasons Hyperloop One is so intrigued by us, is our location. Um, you know, we're right in the middle of the country. We happen to be the birthplace of the U.S. interstate system. There's a little plaque, uh, you know, right outside the highway in St. Charles, just across the river, says, you know, this is where it all began, right? Well, you know, we're also the place that started transatlantic flight. Um, you know, the Chamber of Commerce in St. Louis actually was the organization that backed Charles Lindbergh when he flew over the Atlantic. So we have this history in, in, in Missouri of transportation innovation. And the location is a key factor because if you're going to build a national network, um, national infrastructure of some kind, Missouri is a really good place to start. You don't start on the margins and build in, you start on the, in, the, in the hub and you start to build out. So with that in mind, we have been very, um, um, I would say very aggressive in trying to recruit other states to the cause. So we've reached out to states like Kansas and Illinois, Ohio, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Colorado, um, to talk about you know a, a, a bigger concept that you know would be like a heartland hyperloop um, that would run from Denver, you know, across Kansas to Kansas City, St. Louis, and then to Chicago, Indianapolis, and points east. And you know, I think that that's really important to keep in mind because as great as this would be for like the state of Missouri for us to get this. The economic and social benefit um, increases exponentially as you connect more and more people together on this thing. And ultimately, it's going to have to be a national network. It doesn't stop at state borders. So we're very keen on, on working with other states to come up with a common regulatory framework um, and also to continue to build the economic case and the social impact case for why this makes sense and why the country needs it. And, you know, I, I love it because I'm a native Midwesterner. I spent time on the coast, right? But I'm a native Midwesterner. And this is one of those instances where the Midwest actually has some strategic advantages because of our location and because of our top topography, because of the low cost of our land, and because we have such favorable regulatory environments to operate in. Indeed. And it, it makes sense for the regional chamber of commerce in St. Louis to start that then. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you. Well, thank you, Andrew, so much for uh, being on the hype group, and um, I really, really wish you the best of luck and uh, you know, in this new technology and connecting big regions together. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Enjoy the conversation. Thank you.